July 18. Judges 1. Acts 5. Jeremiah 14. Matthew 28. The account of Ananias and Sapphira, whose names are recorded in the earliest Christian records because of their deceit, Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, is disturbing on several grounds. Certainly the early church thought so, verses 5 and 11. Four observations focus the issues. First, revival does not guarantee the absence of sin in a community. When many people are converted and genuinely transformed, when many are renewed and truly learn to hate sin, others find it more attractive to be thought holy than to be holy. Revival offers many temptations to hypocrisy that would be less potent when the temper of the age is secularistic or pagan. Second, the issue is not so much the disposition of the money that Ananias and Sapphira obtained when they sold the piece of property, as the lie they told. Apparently, there were some members who were selling properties and donating all of the proceeds to the church to help in its varied ministries, not least the relief of the needs of brothers and sisters in Christ. Indeed, the man called Barnabas was exemplary in this respect. Chapter 4, verses 36 and 37, and serves as a foil to Ananias and Sapphira. But these two sold their property, kept some of the proceeds for themselves, and pretended that they were giving everything. It was this claim to sanctity and self-denial, this pretense of generosity and piety, that was so offensive. Left unchecked, it might well multiply. It would certainly place into positions of honor people whose conduct did not deserve it. But worse, it was a blatant lie against the Holy Spirit, as if the Spirit of God could not know the truth, or would not care. In this sense, it was a supremely presumptuous act— betraying a stance so removed from the God-centeredness of genuine faith that it was idolatrous. Third, another element of the issue was conspiracy. It was not enough that Ananias pulled this wicked stunt himself. He acted with his wife's full knowledge. Verse 2. Indeed, her lying was not only passive, but active. Verse 8. Betraying a shared commitment to deceive believers and defy God. Fourth, in times of genuine revival, judgment may be more immediate than in times of decay. When God walks away from the church and lets the multiplying sin take its course, that is the worst judgment of all. It will inevitably end in irretrievable disaster. But when God responds to sin with prompt severity, lessons are learned and the church is spared a worse drift. In this case, great fear fell not only on the church, but also on all who heard of these events. Verses 5 and 11. It is written, He whose walk is upright fears the Lord, but he whose ways are devious despises him.